the most progressive position, nor position us for the most progress. So many issues, so many voices, so many opinions. But is anyone asking the right questions? Bringing a distilled approach to the contemporary issues, four cerebral elites, one room, unscripted, unbiased, unadulterated, and progressive. We tackle relevant talking points about society. My name is Dr. Ed. Join me and my goons as we help you navigate through the societal conundrums, where issues are unpacked and solutions delivered with hot stakes of knowledge. We pull no punches and take no prisoners on my take. Society today seems to be uh, a bundle of contradictions. Some will say a lot of abnormalities are in place. Some might even think that um, one insanity takes off where the last one left. Well, you're not the only one thinking about this, and uh, you're not the only one who's thinking that it could be a different approach to lots of things. Um, but just like every time in, in, in history, when major changes have been made in society, it always starts with a conversation. Conversation of who are we, what is supposed to be, and who do we want to be. And just like that, at this time in 2021, we are going to be on that trend of conversations. And we're going to look into insights of relevant talking points and dissect them the best that we can to forge ahead a future that is what living for and what living in. And joining me on doing this, we're going to have some of the brightest minds that I have met in my whole life. Welcome to the pilot edition of My Take with Dr. Ed. Stay tuned with us. We will be back shortly and get into today's topic. Thank you very much. Boom. I am a trader. I am a dresser. Patronize me because I put a lot of uniqueness to my craft. Me, I the so cloth. My shop is at Onipan. I am a photographer. And I am a shoemaker. Me, Seth, Abibaba. In one minute, sell yourself, sell your business and your crafts and your services to the world on the Super Breakfast Show, showing on Super Screen Television every last Saturday of the month from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. Don't forget to include your phone numbers and your business address. Selling made easy. Bringing a distilled approach to the contemporary issues. Four cerebral elites, one room. Unscripted, unbiased, unadulterated, and progressive. BFX we tackle large. relevant talking points about society. Hello and welcome to My Take with Dr. Ed. So here with me, uh, we're going to be having two of my co-hosts. I'll introduce them to you right now. We have, to my left, the Fisher King. And uh, we have Xerxes, into my right. Thank you for having me. These are some extraordinary gentlemen, and I'm glad to have you guys here on set with me today. Thank you. So today we're going to be discussing the Nigerian identity. and. Um, when I say the Nigerian identity, what do I mean? I mean, um, who are we as Nigerians? What does it mean to be a Nigerian? Ideologically, what does it mean to be a Nigerian? In your mind, what do you think it stands for as a Nigerian? In reality, what do we portray as our core values as Nigerians? Who are we? What do we represent to ourselves, to our families, and to the outer, outside world? How do we come across when the name Nigeria or Nigerian comes on board, what are the values that stand out? What are the characteristics that stand out? And um, for this, we'll start with listening to the people. Let's hear what the people have to say. Who's a Nigerian? What do they think a Nigerian is? And what do they think it means to be a Nigerian? Let's hear the people. Then we'll be right back and talk about it. Of course, as a Nigerian. Hey, Yami, can you kindly tell us like, some of the characteristics of a Nigerian? Okay, of a Nigerian. Yes. It's plenty now. 
as Nigerians, generally we are hustlers. We are used to this kind of um, like rigid lifestyle, struggle, hustle, you know, like that. Okay. You, you want to see more on it? No. Okay, so, Yami, would you earn a business eh, with a Nigerian? The same way you would earn a business with someone from Canada, US, or the United Kingdom? Capital, no. Because the way I handle business, like, with more like a, a Nigerian, back of your mind, you'll be like, whoa, oh, I'm a yeah, little really better. You know, you have this, like, you be security conscious. Let me use that word. You be security conscious, like, because a lot of things are happening. Because there are dubious people all around, uh, and you be skeptical. You know, if you're handling it to a foreigner, you feel that person has more experience than you, you want to do well with that person. What are some of the qualities of a Nigerian? Qualities of a Nigerian, they are hardworking, they are strong, um, they are... Their resilience, no matter what comes their way, they will, pay, they will go through it. So um, they are dogged. So uh, I'm in Nigerian, so I know what I'm saying. Hardworking, they are hardworking. I'm um, trying to put food uh, on their table. So the, the present Nigeria is not uh, it's not easy, but at least we are we are trying and we are going through it. Yeah. Okay, so sir, um, um, would you handle business with a Nigerian the same way you would handle the same business with someone from, let's say, Canada, US, or the United Kingdom? Uh, that uh, is very hard, my brother. And uh, doing business with a fellow Nigerian because you don't trust each other. I will be honest with you, my brother. I don't trust my fellow Nigerians. Once it comes to business, I'm very, very, my IQ is very high. I'm very watchful and I don't want a story, story that I touch at the end of the day. So I would love to do business with a white guy because I know they are sincere. If they tell you yes, their yes is yes, and their no is no. So I would rather go with them than my fellow, my fellow man because all of us are guy. <laughs> so I can't, I can't allow anybody to guide me. So I, would, I would rather stay strong and make sure that I do business with a foreigner because I, I believe those ones that. They are sincere, their economy, everything is okay. So before you think of doing anything like that, it's uh, because of hunger and everything. You want to dupe your fellow brother and have everything to yourself. So I'm engineer Emmanuel Akewole. I'm the former national chairman of the Nigerian Institute of Electrical and Electrical Engineers. So you are in Nigeria, sir? By the grace of God and uh, we okay, common so will of all good people. So and I'm happy to be a Nigerian. So, so, uh, what are some of the qualities of the Nigerian? Yeah, to me, a lot of Nigerians, I mean, on the positive side, we are, when we, we are determined. Anything we want to do, we want to do it and achieve results. So is it business, you go with all heart. Is it religion, you go with all heart. Is it, I mean, education? And that's why all over, there is nowhere in the world, there when they are talking about intellectuals, you will not find Nigerians. I look at uh, Konjo Iweala, the, the recent, I mean, uh, uh, the WTO Director General. He's a Nigerian, she's a Nigerian. Look at African Development Bank, Dr. Akiwu Mishola. Uh, is, is Nigeria the only country in Africa or in the, in the domain? No, but that just shows you, when it comes to education, Nigerians usually, I mean, do very well. They are, they are stars. And as I've said, in business as well. So in everything and anything that a Nigerian center is or hard to do, they normally do it very well. They are one good quality on our positive side. Of course, we have our other minuses. That there are some other people that are on the opposite side. And when they also choose to do it, it will make, I mean, news. So as a believer, we pray that our pluses, those who are making good names in Nigeria, we should do our best to continue to encourage them, showcase them, and also to talk to those that are not doing well, and of course, pray for them so that Nigeria can be better. Okay, sir, so I also like to ask you, uh... would you handle business with a Nigerian the same way you would handle business with someone from Canada, US, or the United Kingdom? Yeah, for me, uh, as a professional, and also a believer. I treat everybody. No matter what you do to me, I with an open hand. 
and I also try to follow procedures. There are business procedures if you want to succeed. If you don't know those procedures, you are likely to fail. No matter whichever part of the world, whether you are dealing with an American, you are dealing with a British, you are dealing with an African, business is done in the business manner if you must succeed. You must know the rules of business, you must follow the rule of business, and you will be able to, I mean, uh, hold on. So if you do all this, you respect whoever you are dealing with, you can go to sleep. On the other hand, if you do not follow, you do not know the rules of business, and you dab into business, you are likely to burn your hands. You respect of where you are calling from. You respect where you are, whether you are in Nigeria, whether you are in America, whether you are dealing with angels from heaven. If it's business and you don't know the rules, you are not ready to follow the rules, you are likely to burn your finger. This is my personal views. Thank you. Well, for a regular Nigerian, we don't have patience because of the situation of the country. We are easily angered. A Nigerian can just get angry just for a mere question, like a legation exactly. You can just see a legation and you are like, bro, sorry, can I? It's, it's like, please, 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 whoa, whoa, please, let me be. Because he's, he's having this mindset that, okay, what is this one wanting again now? What is this one? We don't have this genuine mindset towards each other. That's it. So, um, do you handle um, business with an Nigerian the same way you handle business with someone from, uh, let's say, Canada, US, or United Kingdom? I will handle business with a Nigerian, but um, it depends. I will do business with a Nigerian, of course. But someone from US, Canada, I think I'll give him my all. I'll give him my all in terms of um, money. And I know that our returns are safe because there won't be any, ah, bro, so uh, along the line, this one happened to, ah, we had this law, so we had that, no. But for a Nigerian, definitely there will be a, something came up. I understand. So with a Nigerian, I will do business with a Nigerian, yes. But we'll have to apply some diplomacy. <laughs> All right. Those were very interesting um, points of view. And um, I think they were, they, they, were, they were sort of holistic, if you ask me. They were sort of holistic, if you ask me. So basically, from what I could, from what I could scrap up, you know what? Enough of me. What do you guys think? Well, um... <laughs> And, and some really interesting takes. Um, I like what the academician said. Yeah. I think his name was Oye Wale or something. Yeah. yeah, he mentioned how he mentioned some good qualities about Nigerians. You know, he said um, we were intelligent people uh, on the intellectual side, and yeah. we, we had determination. You know, and it's true. You know, you look recently in the news. Um, there was a global mathematics competition. Right for um, secondary schools, the winner overall was a female Nigerian. You, you see, um, that's interesting. And you had people from China, you had people from India, from really. those people who from you think really. are technological giants. And of course, you know, mathematics fuels technology. So, but they all lost to her. She was the winner. Uh, so. Um, you see stories on Twitter of several people who go abroad, maybe they finish with a third class, then they go outside the to school, and they come out with first class, you know, valedictorian and whatever. So yeah, Nigerians are really very intelligent set of people, intellectually very sound, and they are really determined as well. Whatever a Nigerian sets his mind to is definitely bound to achieve it. So yeah, so, I agree with that. I agree wholly with that. Yeah, I, I think so too. Nigerians are also quite, quite dogged. A Nigerian really doesn't uh, give up easily. He really, <laughs> he really doesn't give up easily. A Nigerian really doesn't give up easily. Yeah. Yeah, you, 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 you find that, for instance, um, although it's, it, it's not the legal way, but it just shows you that same doggedness. You have people who leave this country really on foot. True. From here to Libya. True. They take, they take a, a bus to, I think, Ghana, and then from there they start out some backdoor entrances and then trek through the desert. True. Now, this is not a nice one, but it tells you how far a Nigerian really is willing to go to achieve what he considers to be his dreams. Um, Nigerians would easily, happily travel to the United States without a savings, an education, or anything else. A good number of them fare pretty okay. Uh, who, what sane person? Like, what sane person? <laughs> Unless you are fully fueled by, I mean, and that's, 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 that's the danger of a Nigerian's determination, right? What sane person leaves home and goes to a faraway place with absolutely nothing? 
Nigerians are when you do not know anybody, you just go there with nothing. Nigerians are also people of faith, if you ask me. They are very religious. I don't even mean religious. Nigerians are people of faith. They have they have a a very optimistic viewpoint of life. Yes. Even within terrible situations, they have a very optimistic viewpoint of life. They are able to conjure for themselves by whatever means enough motivation to say this is possible, even when everything else says it's not possible. Maybe it's because, you know, we've really not had anything handed to us ever in life before. And maybe it's because the alternative to that is just debt, <laughs> possibly, because there's, there's nothing to go back to. If you, if you say, oh, I want to be a crybaby, I know this is not really working out, there's, there's no one who's going to catch you, there's no one who's going to soften the land for you, there's no one who's going to do that. So you have to create some place where you can work with. Yeah. And I think that's, that's somewhere where that comes from. Yeah, I, I, think, I think it's this thing you're talking about is a cultural thing, because um, I'm Igbo. And we have a name we give children. We say Tabo. What that means is that today is the beginning. So Nigerians are a forward-looking people. True. So you will find that a Nigerian who in his past was very poor has no contacts, has no savings, but somehow believes that it is possible for me to start from here, go where I am, and get to that place where I'm a billionaire. And that optimism doesn't fade in most people. But that, is, but that is madness, really. How? <laughs> it's, it's, but there's a thin line between genius and madness. I, there I is agree. a thin line between genius. That, line is, defined, I, that I thin line is defined by success. Agreed. Once you and, succeed at your madness, you're a genius. That you're a genius. I, I agreed. And this is why I think Nigerians are a problem to themselves, right? Um, it's like a tragic flaw, so to speak. What makes the hero destroys the hero, for instance. Um, think about it. Some, one of those guys, he said something. He said, every, every one of us in Nigeria are a guy. You know, if we get the meaning of that, it means, <laughs> it means that everyone is, um, you know, in a, in a nasty way, you know, in a not so positive way. And that's very true. Example, you call an artisan to do a job. You know, he looks at mm. he looks at what he wants to do, then he tells you, oh, guy, we're gonna need this material or this material. Okay, recently my friend wants to fix his car, right? So he's talking to the man and the, the, the man says, Okay, we need two things. We need this for the trunk. And there's a trunk light, and then there's it turns out that the trunk light he's talking about and he quoted for like eighteen thousand. That's for an Akura. He quoted for like eighteen thousand. Very tiny light mm -hmm. comes together with the trunk itself which already has a separate quotation of its own. Do you see? So it's like, I, I want to buy something, and then there's something in I that want, one I thing want I want to buy. I want to buy a phone, and the phone has a camera, but I quote you for the camera. Exactly, camera. separately. So that's, okay, that, so that, that, that's, now, that. And let, let's take that and move into what we have today, because um, one of the reasons why I talk, talk about this, the Nigerian identity, is because of the Nigerian situation, actually. We're not where we want to be as a nation. We're not where anybody would want to be as a nation. Um, and the truth of the matter is that, however you want to look at it, it is the people that are in it that determine you know, what the nation looks like. True. So um, given that we are not where we want to be as a nation, how does Nigerian identity come to play in the, in the backward state where we have found ourselves to be currently? How does it, is there, is there, is there, is there, is there a connection? Is there, is there a cause and effect relationship between Nigerian identity and Nigerian situation? Because I think there is, and I'm going to just start off first. I think, aside from these beautiful things we've mentioned about Nigerians being tenacious, being um, dogged, I think also, also Nigerians, um, are, we have some interesting qualities about ourselves which have put us where we are. First of all, I think Nigerians do not have um, Nigerians are easily, they have what, what I'll call retrograde amnesia. Mm. They really do not remember things. In fact, actually, we do not remember things. We do not care about the things that we do remember. Um, we are an in time people. What happens now is all that matters. Tabu. Mm. Tabu, right? Yeah. What happens now is all that matters. Um, what I get now is all that matters. 
how I live now is all that matters. And you never get to build a posterity with this kind of mindset. You can, you can never build anything that lasts beyond now yeah. with that mindset. And I've seen that play out so many times. Is the reason why somebody can come and contest for an election with corn. Oh boy. And eat the corn and because he's eating the corn now, now you feel like he's you feel that he resonates with you and as silly as it looks it works it flies the common man is excited that ah this big man has come to come and eat um, bole or, or roasted corn and they, we do this every four years it's a ritual yes right and it works why because we don't first of all we don't even have the principle set to say this is what i stand for and this is why I don't stand for. The Nigerian generally, in my observation, I've been a Nigerian, lived in Nigeria a lot of time, <laughs> most of my years, right? The Nigerian does not have any ideology beyond interest. Personal interest, yes. Um, that's, that's, what, 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 what has been your experience? That's, that's basically what it is for me. And that personal interest is set to um, divide the country if measures are not taken. Um, one of those guys on the Vox Pop, he said something, he said um, Nigerians are not genuine to each other. When he said that, something was ringing in my head. I was thinking about the relationship between the North, the South, West, South, South, and um, South East. I, I think, I think, I think we're ever going far, talking about the relationship between North, so, South, West, South, No, because, because Let me, this, this personal interest thing you mentioned, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it is predominantly in view in the six geopolitical zones of Nigeria. Everybody is thinking of themselves. For instance, we, we look at um, reports from you see in the notes when you see um, maybe there's been an attack somewhere. Yeah. You hear, uh, you see an obnoxious. I think I saw one recently. It was really obnoxious. Like um, it was reporting. It was a northern report. Like it said, like Christians, southern Christians kill, and it was that that was really not what happened. But that's how it is being reported in the north. So what does that do? That fuels angst. But why was that reported that way? It was reported that way because the political elite in the north intend to hold the north to themselves, to give them a certain power when it comes to time for elections, for um, federal um, constituencies and whatnot. You know, federal positions and stuff like that. So I, think, I think the problem that, that division, that division, you know that they create they create within the common nigerians so to speak becomes an issue and that is done because of personal interest so if they were if they are able to trigger that personal um bias you know these guys begin to in quotes look out for themselves are supposed to look out for the collective of the nation okay yes, so can, can I this is just this? like I, I think now Let's take, let's move away from Nigeria a bit so that we can do a bit of a compare and contrast, right? Let's look at America, because Nigeria often is, isn't, hear, that, isn't that too far away? No, I don't think it's too far away for the reason I'm about to review. We seem to have a diversity problem in Nigeria. Okay. More than 500 languages. Okay. And each of those tribes pulling in one direction, which may or may not align with everybody else. Okay. Right? Now, the question is, those 500 tribes and tongues, they are all supposed to be Nigeria. They right? all are Nigeria. So the question should then be, look at America. We have something they call the American dream. Yeah. Something that drives people from Nigeria, from Kosovo, from Albania, basically from everywhere, to go to America and become Americans. But we were born here our fathers were born here, our grandfathers were born here, and somehow we've not learned to become Nigerians. That is my argument. There, is, there doesn't seem to be a unifying doctrine of Nigerianness. There is, though. There is, and it's interesting. Okay. And I'll tell it to you. Nigeria does have a unifying doctrine. Nigeria does have that single thing where when it comes up, Everyone from every corner can sit down, smile over a bottle of beer, beer drink, whatever, laugh about it, joke about it. I think there are about two things, or well, I'll start with one. Okay. And it is, like I said in the beginning, the doctrine of selfishness. Oh, I see. The doctrine of selfishness, the doctrine of myself 
how I looked out for myself, how, how I maximized for myself, how I tweaked the system to work on myself. Every Nigerian in every bar, every social gathering, almost every, I don't want to use every because every is absolute and you can you always be wrong when you use absolute terms. But in most places, most any two or three random Nigerians can laugh over <laughs> and resonate about a situation where somebody came and maneuvered, but came out on top. Okay. And and this, I, I want to I also want to weigh in on something that Zex has said. Okay. When they were talking about the regional diversities, it's not even regional. That's that's the thing. That regional diversity comes from that individualistic diversity. In yeah. fact, I'll give you an example, a very simple one to illustrate what I'm talking about. When we come to Lagos, like we're streaming from, right? It's very diverse. Lots of ethnic groups are here in Lagos, and it's almost like no man's land. I'm from Cross River State, right? If I met an Akwaibom man here in Lagos, right? That gentleman is going to go like, hey, hey, Nika. In my language, that's um, my brother. My brother, my brother, my brother. Hey, and we're going to tally this me and you against the whole world thing if I let him fly. It's going to be me and this man, my brother. My brother. Ah, he's, he will look out for me everywhere else. If things are coming out, he will look out for me. This same guy, let's travel together. <laughs> oh. As soon as we're getting to Calabai to Bridge, where there's a quiet bomb and there's this thing, everything changes. He seizes in his mind to be my brother. Because we're no longer in Lagos where there is nothing else that you know unifies us. As soon as we get to Cross River, a quiet bomb, he's a quiet bomb man. I'm suddenly a Calabar man. We're no longer brothers. He is now an Akwaibom man, <laughs> and we are now fighting different interests. And I am now a Calabar man. And then, as he arrives at Akwaibom, you would think that, oh, he's now an Akwaibom man. He's, okay, he's now a brother to an Akwaibom man together in the bus. They will be happy together. Ah, we're now brothers. This Calabar man, they go Calabar. Now, as they arrive at Akwaibom, right, immediately one person is going to go to Eket, another person is going to Uyo. As they are dividing, now you get man. This is a new man. They have different interests immediately. So he's no longer brothers with that Eket man he was in the bus with. No, they have now arrived somewhere closer to home. He is now an Uyo man. Right now, that one is an Eket man. As he arrives at Uyo, based on the divisions that are, he also again separates himself from the next guy who is close to him. Up until he gets to his house. In fact, when he gets to his village, there are delineating lines between villages, and people still do not hold themselves as brothers I in that place. I think there are exceptions to this. That it's interesting that you mentioned this because at the end of the day, what? So it all what, goes down at the end of the day to him. What the Nigerian stands for himself. What we can say is that um, there are two. There, there, we can sum that up into two things: the um, politics of self. Mm -hmm. uh, right, and then um, self-preservation. That's what drives the Nigerian. Okay, that is the identity of the Nigerian, so to speak, practically. Practically, practically. all the positive traits we have, we have seen them mentioned today: resilience, they go all the way, all of that is geared actually much more towards self-preservation. And um, to think self-preservation is like to think you are in the jungle, in the animal kingdom, which now reminds me, uh, on social media recently, you find a lot of people refer to Nigeria as the zoo. Yes. As much as it hurts me to look at, you know, I don't agree with them. But practically, if you look at the behavioral, if we go from behavioral science, we look at the way Nigerians behave and we talk about self-preservation, the behavior is that of people or, or animals in the jungle. It's all about self-preservation. It's dog eat dog, shark eat shark, whatever it is. And that's what I was talking about, that's, that's, that, that, that's how, exactly. how we can vibe about that. We, that's we, exactly we can what vibe about that because any, anywhere. If, 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 there's, uh, if there's a common interest here and I share that requires us to kill you, even though we are on the same show right now. We'll Brother, you're dead. You're dead. Suddenly, I feel scared. That's the Nigerian way. Do you understand? So, and this is terrible. And this is why there's really no sustainable progress. But, but I, think, I think there is a counter to that. Okay. You now, following the, following the Civil War, following the Civil War, there is historical context. In fact, before the Civil War, 
you you had um okay between 1920 and 1950 yeah between 1920 and 1950 you had Igbo people go from being behind the Yoruba you know, and the North. We'll, we'll, we'll come back to this okay. right after this break. Hold that thought. Hold okay. that thought right there. We are coming right back for you. All right, stay with us, man. Unscripted, unbiased, unadulterated, and progressive. We tackle relevant talking points about society. Welcome back, welcome back. So we were in the middle, in the middle of a very important discourse and we had um, the Fisher King giving it to us hot. Brother, take it away. Alright, so as I was saying before, between, as of 1910, I think, yeah, I think it was 1910, um, there was a newspaper clipping, I'm not quite sure of the exact year, okay. but it was between 1910 and 1915. There was a newspaper clipping where the district head, the district officer of Onicha, yeah. banned people from entering the market naked. Oh. These people were Igbo people. Oh. oh. They weren't wearing clothes. Oh. You're, you're like that. Do you understand? <laughs> so that should tell you that at that point, um, the level of English, lit English literacy was not high. Was not very high. Do you understand? Yeah. Arochuku was conquered in 1910. Okay. Lagos became a colony in 1860. That's 50 years difference. Mm. So you could say that the Igbo man in general was about 40 to 50 years behind, behind with the exception of maybe Onicha. Right? Good. So by 1950, about 60% of senior civil service positions were being held by Igbos. Wait, what? About 60. Oh, oh, really? Now, this indicates that between 1910, 1910 or say 20, thereabouts, and 1950, the um, literacy levels spiked. among Igbo people spiked wow, very that's high. Nice. That's now, fast. the question is, how did this happen? I'm Igbo, so I can give you context. Okay. My grandfather was a municipal director of works in Inuku. In my grandfather's house, hmm, it wasn't just his children living there. You could find children of people from Oba, people from many different places. And they were living off him, basically. They were not his children. They were not even his cousin's children. How did they get that educational now, spike? Now, let's get talk about the educational the spike. First off, in those days, you would have scholarships organized by the village. Because there is a saying we have that it takes a village to raise a child. I've heard that. You've heard that, right? So what happens is you would have the best students selected, the most brilliant selected, the village would pay for their education and sponsor them up to university level so that they would get positions, high positions in government, so that they can train others. Oh, now that's very... Now, that's how that <laughs> came about. That, that's heavy. Now, that goes directly against self-interest. Absolutely. It becomes the interest of the tribe as opposed to the interest of the self. Oh, wow. Now, the question is, Nigeria is supposed to be a nation. Now, a nation is a tribe. Give or take. Give or take. A nation is a tribe. And a tribe can be held together by one of two things, or both. It is either they have genetic linkages, like a shared history, like you have with the Hebrews, the Zionists in Israel, right? Or they could be united by a singular um, bit of fiction. Life and concept. Yes, exactly. A life concept. Like ideology. you have with America, the American dream, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Now, the question is, okay, Nigerians, we are so many different peoples, right? So what is that unifying okay, ideology? But, but this thing you're talking about, mm -hmm. uh, about the Igbos at that time, mm -hmm. um, collectively training a child for the, really, this is really alien to 
the perceivable um, Nigerian culture of right now. Exactly what I was going to say. It, it's really alien to it. And now that you've mentioned it, I would say that it's, it's conceivable because um, I think the Igbo still have this um, informal training thing where yes, the apprenticeship or we program, call it Igbo Odibo. Yeah, whatever they call it. Mm -hmm. The one I see. And it works a lot. Yes, it does. It works a lot. And it's, it's one of the reasons why they've been doing well financially. Doing well financially. Yeah, that's that's good, but somehow I think that's that's an exception on, on, on their part and just now, in that here's, field. Here's the thing. Um the truth about it is the sort of Nigerian society we had in say the fifties and sixties. Fifties, the sixties is very different from the Nigerian society we have that we have now. today. I want you to use the value of the Naira in quote, mm -hmm. right? Use the value of the Naira as the landmark to measure where Nigeria's society is now. The Naira is practically in the gutter. The Naira is digging for oil. Yes, what? what? The Naira is digging for oil. And it keeps going lower and lower and lower and lower. This is the state of the situation. Well, considering the Naira is backed by oil, it's backed by oil. It, it should it be digging for oil. It does have, it <laughs> does have <laughs> ground to dig for oil. So, if you if you look at that, so you need to say that respectfully. The Naira is is since the, the Naira, Naira is prospecting. The Naira is prospecting. <laughs> it's trying to find ways in which to better itself. So you <laughs> realize that it comes from oil. So it's it's. So once you talk, consider that, and let's not let's not forget what I mean. One of the guys on the Vox Pop said, said something like that. One of the guys in the video we watched, he said something like that. He said that. Because of the economic situation, because people are hungry, they are angry. All right, true. So you think about that, right? Jok jokes apart, true. That's a major point. So it's the same reason why people are tenacious I... to steal, tenacious to preserve themselves. Okay. Before you had a naira, a naira could take you, I mean, a naira was equal to a pound. For goodness sake, that's what you were, that's true. the situation we're talking about. Now, very... how much is, how much, how, how much, what's pound to? There is very little um, time for sound ideological training or conceptualizations when the belly is empty. Exactly. Really, factually. And I'll give you a very simple example. I'm a medical doctor by training, right? And Nigerian doctors are one of the smartest in the world. Factually, it's not, it's not, it's not contestable. When we travel to the UK, we blow them. They don't, they don't understand how somebody can be this bright. When we travel to the US, we floor them. It's, it's, it's that way all around the world, really. But we do not, how, how much of that is shown in our healthcare. ingenuity, in our healthcare system? How much of that is shown in our inventions? How many Nigerians have come up with uh, maybe the Kola Wale procedure or the, um, Efana uh, maneuver. Nobody is interested in that. The reason is this for me. The I found it out in school though. The medical training system in Nigeria is centered around survival, and there's a whole mindset towards it. Are you worthy of being a doctor? Are you worthy of being a doctor? Are you smart enough to be a doctor? And the load is so much. And it's about survival of the fittest, survival of the fittest, survival of the fittest. And so we are excellent at surviving. And so when you move us from Nigeria to the UK, where they are not trying to survive, they are thriving, we get there and we feel so free. We have so much potential and we don't blow up. But the problem about surviving is this. As long as you're focusing on surviving, you never blossom. You will never find a Nigerian student, medical student, who is thinking about um, how to join a professor in his spare time to research on some random stuff. What spare time are you talking about? Where is the spare time? <laughs> you want to have carryover. You, 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 carry over. you want to repeat the year. <laughs> Do you understand? So you, do, you will find that. And those are the things that bet innovations. So I think, and they're all interconnected because you talk about this uh, struggling thing. Yeah. And even in the ideology, you talk about just you know survival of the fetus. Yeah. It's all interconnected. As long as we do not, um, we do not have a stable enough environment, then we're not gonna have enough time, in quote, to think about ideals. And it's a vicious cycle. As long as we don't think about ideals, we're not gonna have a stable we're society a built society. up. Never, ever, ever going to have a stable So, but I do notice something in my short span of living on Earth. <laughs> A lot of people are older than me. Um, I notice that the Nigeria that I have been told of it's not the same with the Nigeria that we have today. 
I've seen pictures of Lagos where people queued up for buses. I've seen, I've heard about meal tickets being given in universities. I've heard about, I've heard about Nigerians acting in a sane manner as a norm. Yeah, I've seen pictures. Where did all, I've seen pictures to my brother. Where did all that go? Any ideas as to where, where did that idea, because it seemed like we did have an ideology that differs from what we currently what have currently today. Have. Where did that ideology go? How can we get it back? Because there was a time where a Nigerian could be held up for integrity. I've heard about it. It sounds strange to me, but I've heard about it from people who swear by it and say it fervently. There was a time where integrity, hard work, and great outcomes were the Nigerian thing. thing. And it's not so difficult to imagine because we are resilient people, we are hardworking people. But somehow along the line, it seems like that has been corrupted and now we only put that hard work into... Okay, I, I think, I think um, this is not just a Nigerian problem. I don't think it is. I think selfishness, the selfishness you see in the world today, is everywhere. And I think the fact that it manifests the way it does in Nigeria is down to the fact that Nigeria is in a certain place, okay. economically and politically. But it's the same everywhere. Now, that's the reason why I am not so interested, I'm not so much interested in where that ideology went as I am in how do we get it back. Okay. Because I feel like, I feel like, for starters, we need to examine what things we value highly. Let's, let's, let's go there. I want to build a house there, and I want to do a penthouse too. Good. I want to start with the political structure you mentioned. Because one of the major tellers of our ideology as a people is people who are ruling us. How, especially because we're a democratic society. Are we, really? Well. It's sad because we are said to be a democratic society. Okay, yes. On paper, we are. Um, <clears throat> how do the people... Because the people that are ruling you are somehow an expression of your choice. The people that are ruling us right now are the expression of our choices. The expression of our choices. Either our direct choices our, in that we choose to... By commission to, or by omission. Yes. Good. Thank you for understanding me clearly. <laughs> I don't have to go forward in that again. But there are our choices. Yes. How? How did we come about these kind of choices? We have a lot of bright minds in the populace. We, don't, we can't say the same for those that are leading us. Okay, now, let and me... That's our choice. And how do, how do, they, how do they work this? I, I, you, can say, you can say that there are some ways they hack themselves into getting there. But how do they hack it so effectively? I get that. Okay, let me, let, me, let me deal with first your first question, which was... How come in a country where we have so many intelligent people, we have, do we have such leaders? First, let's talk about the 2015 elections. In the lead up to the 2015 elections, we had people like Wale Shoenka writing hagiographies for Muhammad Buhari. We had Jafet Omojua. We had, um, we had um, Deepo Awojide, a doctor. These people are intellectuals. These people are people whose intellect I admire. Okay. Do you understand? I mean, Shoenka is a Nobel laureate, so at least, you know, <laughs> right. So the question is, if people of this caliber could overlook Buhari's historical antecedents. Oh, we're mentioning names now. Yo, okay. yes, we're mentioning names. We don't pull any punches, do we? We don't. We don't. Hell, hell. So let's we mention don't. names. If a show inca can come out and tell me, after in 1984, 1983 to 1985, that he lived through, and I did not, and tell me that Buhari was a good choice as president, you have to ask yourself, is it really about intellect? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> it's not about intellect. There, there are two sides. It is about values. There are two sides. To what do we value the most in Nigeria? Okay. I will tell you what we value the most in Nigeria. Tell me. Wealth. Oh, wow. I can't that argue is, with that. That is, the, that is the thing we value the most in Nigeria. <laughs> but, and it is a problem. But then again, you say we value wealth, and these people... Um, uh, hold on, I'm, I'm just going to... 
I don't know what value of wealth they saw in Brian because this is a man who had said he was his accounts were down to two hundred thousand naira. He just owned a few cows and little. No, I think when he says value wealth, they think about their personal so maybe, wealth. We uh, good. Who said there are two sides? It brings us back to what I said, right? Mm -hmm. I said that we are all about self-preservation. So you're saying so, even the intellectuals might be sold I, out? I, no, hold on. I'm coming to that. I said there are two sides to that coin. It may also mean that intellectuals are also not the best set of people to look at. When that is the point to, I'm making. When, when you want to think about uh, these sorts of decisions, because an intellectual may be intellectual, but what is he intellectual about? What is he intellectually sound about? <laughs> Okay. Uh, do you understand that? Walesho Inka, he understands, he is he's one of my um, mentors, if I would say, for writing. I mean, Walesho Inka is, is sound about philosophies and ideologies and idiosyncrasies. How good is he with the practical aspect you know, of it? I, I no, I think it's even more, it's more than all these um, technicalities. It's not that technical. I think simple things, these kind of decisions can be made by simple people. On a general note, if we have the right, um, the right, the right codes of conduct, the right codes, um, there have been there have been statements that have been made by some of our political leaders at previous times before they got into office. There have been things that they have done at previous times before they got into office. Many of these things that are QED supposed to disqualify them from, holding from public office. ever talking, not holding, ever talking about holding public offices. Yeah. But somehow in this country, there seems to be nothing that can be said. The there seems to be nothing that can be said by anybody in the past that has money and has political connections that disqualifies him from public okay, office. Let's, there seems, let's to, be, there seems to be let's, nothing let's, like let's, that. Let's get to and Nigerians the reason are moral people. The reason is because are we really? Yeah. Okay. Now, let are me, moral different from immoral? Right? Yes. Very different from they are very different. Immoral people. What? The, the point is, the end justifies the means. If you kill and kill and kill, but you become rich and rich enough to cut soup for somebody, guy, you are fine. To, you to, are cut, good. to, cut, to cut soup, they do give you. Okay, a, let's. let's okay, speaking of this you thing righteous. you just said now, yeah. I think, for example, a good example of what you just said now. Today we have a president who committed high treason in 1983. High treason. The penalty for high treason is death. Per Nigerian law. Yeah. He's your president now. Even by his means. And there is no problem with that. We have no problem with it. But let's get to why don't we have a problem with it? I think we have a deficit of the right kind of education because I think people make decisions often based on what they know and believe. For example, I did not vote in the 2011 elections. Okay. Why? Because then, in my opinion, what's the point? It's going to be rigged anyway. There are a lot of people who vote for certain people because, well, he's our guy. Oh, well, just for note, I'm here for voting, please. Thank yeah. you very much. He's our guy. <laughs> Do you understand? Yeah. In 2015, I was older and more experienced. I supported Good Luck at Bella Jonathan, not because I felt he was uh, closer to me genetically, which he isn't really. He's his own amiibo. But because I felt that he was more pro business than the other person who has an antecedent, who has a history of destroying the Nigerian economy. Recorded history. Which is repeating so, itself. Exactly. Which, 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 is, which is repeating itself, repeating itself now. actually. Do you understand? It, 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 so, it, it, one thing I think we need to educate Nigerians on is you, within the, um, within the personal space, you can forgive. But forgiveness should not exist in politics. Oh, wow, that's a big one. Well, this is, this is totally along the lines of something I said earlier, that we have amnesia. Yes. Now, that's amnesia. We don't remember. We don't I remember think we as do. Nigerians. We don't. I think we, we don't do. functionally remember. We may remember, but okay. we don't do it. We don't, do we don't deal with it. with it like, okay, now the thing is. We have this quick thing of, hey, yeah. Hey, yeah. yeah. So no, Nigerians are so easy to. Nigerians are so easy to, hey, yeah, away many things. Okay. Hey, yeah. 
Now, my person, you know, they, they, they have Nigerians are, are, are the masters to me of illogical arguments. Oh, yes, <laughs> illogical Very An arguments illogical. where the premise does not justify the conclusion. I like this person to be president, or I like this person to be god like, 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 like the one, like the one where people said we, we are going to vote, vote out. Good luck, Jonathan. No, no, no let's, let's, nothing let's, about the person who they want to vote, vote in. in. It's just about voting him out. We want to get this person. Okay, anyway, out. Shall, let's let's leave that okay. by the side. But we have this thing like um, person A wants to be president. Person A has killed before, said he would destroy before, said he did it before, has done so many things that are supposed to, like I said, disqualify mm. from ever running for gov 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 uh, presidency or anything. Or public office. Then a Nigerian argument to that is, and it's very sustainable here in, in the country, a Nigerian argument to that is, hey, yeah, but the guy is a nice man, no? <laughs> hey, yeah, but uh, he has uh, given me so so and so before. Hey, yeah, no, now nah, make me forgive person. I know me if he still come around, still do as in like if he still do well again. Yeah. Hey, yeah, <laughs> all those things may be correct. He may come and do well, right? Yes, he may be a nice person at home, right? Yes, but that is no reason why he should be in government. Competence, proven competence because it's a contested office. Yes, so it's not just for one person, it should be for the best. But we don't have that as an ideology okay. in the country. So we have them um, pity party also as one of our ideologies. Very funny. Very funny. Very but funny. pity party can always work in Nigeria. In fact, once you have devalued yourself and enter the pity mode, in Nigeria you are qualified for almost anything. Yes, I only had, um, I didn't have one pair of shoes while I was going. Mm -mm. You know, and I didn't have a, I didn't have a pair of shoes, that's how we came up with Jonathan. I have only 200,000 in my account. And, and that's how and, we came up. And, and, and 150,000. <laughs> like I said. Well, just, just for the records, just for the records, I have just this pair of senator I'm putting on now. <laughs> I would like to be president. You guys could help me out. All right. No, you're wrong. Wrong. <laughs> I, think, I think basically I can Do you have transport? I don't have transport. Please vote me in. <laughs> <laughs> it's not my vice president. He doesn't have transport. Okay, you. No, I don't have money to cut my hair. <laughs> that's the reason why it's this. Yes, that's, that's the reason why it's this. So <laughs> vote me for governor on Anambra State. Basically, Nigerians don't, uh, you don't elevate value. What we elevate is outcome. Basically, so um, if we are not interested in what it does is. seem like we can't round up talking about all of this. We're going to be back with this um, topic. It's, it's a rich one because before you can make a difference, you need to know who you are. If you don't know who you are and what's wrong with your concentration of yourself, you would never be able to make the right choices. You would never be able to get out of where you are. And um, I believe that um, there's a lot of great in Nigeria, a lot of great people. I'm Nigerian. I've always been Nigerian. I've met a lot of Nigerians. These gentlemen with me are Nigerians, and they're the best people I've met um, for a long time. And we have such potential. So go nowhere, stay with us as we come back to you next week talking about the Nigerian identity. We're going to be talking solutions. So what can we do and what's the way forward? Don't miss it. Thank you for staying with us this much. It's been great having you, the Fisher King and Zexus. Thank you. Thanks for being with me. You guys are the best. See you all later next week on My Take with Dr. Ed. Boom. <laughs> There's a glitch in the fabric of society. Everyone's on red alert. Most people are trying to save the society. Some just live with it. Over and again, we find that the working norms that drive our society do not essentially represent the most progressive position, nor position us for the most progress. So many issues, so many voices, so many opinions.